Just to be completely transparent, this video was inspired by Spired's video on cracks in the blade, which I highly recommend you check out, link in the description. However, when it comes to what is the best chapter in Berserk, I have a different answer, my pick not being cracks in the blade, but being Berserk chapter 47, Wounds part 2. Before I start the video proper, I'd like to ask for all of you to like, comment and subscribe, as it is a massive help for the channel, thank you. Berserk is a story with a lot of themes, but the one I feel is the strongest is the theme of struggle. The world of Berserk is rather horrific, with heinous acts being rather unfortunately quite common. And although many characters have suffered throughout the series, such as Farnes and her childhood, or Griffith after losing Guts and ending up being tortured for a year, no one hands a candle to Guts. Guts was born from a dead woman, had his adopted mother die, and then was sold out by his father, only to kill said father by accident. Guts had a tortured past before he even joined the band of the Hawk, and at the time had many issues as a result. He didn't like to be touched and hated getting close to people. He was rash, caring more about fighting for his life than living it. The big black shadow of Donovan remained cast over his mind for years and years. Guts was never someone to talk about his feelings. He would just bottle up his feelings and let it out by swinging his sword. However, this all changed when Guts returned to the band of the Hawk after having left it for a year. It all changed when he reunited with Casca. Wounds Part 2 is easily my favourite chapter in Berserk and one of the best in my opinion. It has no great battles, no blood or gore, and only features two characters, but damn is it good. The chapter starts with Guts and Casca having sex. It is both of their first times and this is very important. For both Guts and Casca, characters who maintain a hard exterior and don't like to be vulnerable, this is a big moment. They are letting their guards down and being at the mercy of the other person, and this is when Guts snaps. He pins Casca to the tree, strangling her with his own hands. He sees his younger self and Casca being dominated by a force that she can't fight back against, and honestly it scares him. For one of the first times in the series at this point, we see Guts' fear. He is scared, horrified by what he just did, all the trauma of killing Gambino and being sold off to Donovan coming back to haunt him. Ever since joining the band of the Hawk, Guts has never shown much emotion. He had just been swinging his sword, but in this chapter he let it all spill out. For the first time he tells someone about his past, Casca tries to reassure him, but he had none of it. Guts feels immense grief and regret for Gambino's death. He tried to justify it to himself, but the pain in his face was obvious. Guts doesn't want Casca to tell him that he hadn't done anything wrong, he just had to let it all out. However, rather than shun him or be disgusted by his act, Casca accepts him and accepts his pain. Guts then shows concern for her about how he ruined her first time. Guts, the hundred man killer, is showing concern for Casca? They both can lick each other's wounds, and after accepting each other, wounds and all, the two fall asleep in each other's arms, ending the chapter. This chapter is a masterpiece in my eyes. Of course the artwork is stunning as always, the first few pages showing Guts past trauma in a visual spread is beautifully done, and the faces in this chapter especially are incredible. The pain and sorrow in Guts' expressions is some of the best in the series, and the concern shown by Casca feels completely authentic. Guts is one of the most human characters in fiction, and this chapter is one of the highlights of his characterization. In this scene, Casca learns about Guts, about his past, and realises why he hates to be touched. Only at two points in the story does Guts express his hatred for being touched. The first is in the Golden Age, up until the point where he returns to the Band of the Hawk, and the second is in the Black Swordsman arc. This is very relevant when we realise why. After the Eclipse, Guts is nothing but rage and revenge. This is shown by his rash acts to kill apostles no matter what, and during this time he hates being touched. This is because of how broken Guts is after the Eclipse, and how all his development has vanished. The one beam of light for Guts was Casca, but he left her behind, and as a result his hatred for being touched reappeared. The support Casca gave Guts in this chapter was crucial for his development, and without this interaction, Guts would have fallen completely to the Beast of Darkness, and would still be on his hate-filled quest to kill all the Apostles and get revenge on Griffith. Stepping back from the series as a whole and focusing back on the Golden Age, this chapter also mirrors the previous chapter, Prepared for Death, where Casca tells Guts about her past and how she joined the Hawks. Casca, until this point, hated Guts' his Guts, but after this interaction in that cold cave, did she begin to fall for him? She exposed herself completely to him, but he didn't reciprocate it, and instead left the Hawks for a year. Only in Wounds, after Guts returns, does he open up to Casca and their relationship flourish. Guts and Casca's relationship is one of my favourites in fiction, and it's so heartbreaking when you see what has happened to Casca after the Eclipse. Rereading this chapter after knowing Casca's fate leaves a sour taste in the mouth, but now that Casca has regained her sanity, there may be hope for these two Hawk commanders, who are tough on the outside but soft on the inside. Wounds Part 2 paints Guts in a terribly human light, and makes his and Casca's relationship feel so much more real. It is easily my favourite chapter in Berserk, and is one of the best ever written. 
Again, I want to give a shout out to Spide who inspired this video, and I urge you to check out his own video on the topic and why he thinks Cracks in the Blades is the best chapter in Berserk. With all that said and done, I'd like to ask you to comment, subscribe, and like. I've been Seth the Sin, and I am signing out.